All right, now to give us more perspective in terms of what, of course, is happening in these elections and why these elections are so important for Pakistan, we're being joined by um, former Ambassador Abdul Basit, who's joining us live from Islamabad. He's a former High Commissioner for India and also the former Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson. Uh, Ambassador Basit, thank you very much indeed, sir, for taking time out and speaking to us here on Vyond. And let me, in fact, start off by asking you this question. Uh, you know, a lot of people are looking at what is happening in, in these elections. They say, you know, how much ground do you think Pakistan has ended up losing diplomatically due to poll instability and how much it will cover with these elections? Uh, thank you very much for having me. I think elections in any country, in any democratic system, are uh, part and parcel of uh, a country's growth. Uh, and uh, in Pakistan, too, we have been looking forward to the, these elections. And I'm sure that as a result of these elections, uh, whosoever is able to form, a, form the next government, uh, Pakistan uh, would be put on a, on a positive trajectory. And uh, uh, many things which uh, have been pending for long, uh, we would be able to uh, get our act together. And uh, this is a positive development in my view. <clears throat> right. Now, you know, internationally and even within Pakistan, I'm pretty sure there's this chatter that no sitting prime minister in Pakistan has been able to complete a five-year term. Do you think in the aftermath of these elections, the person who ever gets elected will be able to complete the five-year term as the prime minister in the country? I wish I had a crystal ball, but uh, uh, it is encouraging to see that uh, at least uh, uh, three uh, national assemblies uh, did complete their five-year term, though there have been change of uh, prime ministers, but uh, the national assemblies uh, were not resolved. They completed their five-year term since 2008. So that in itself, I think, is, is something which uh, should be celebrated in the context of Pakistan. And one hopes that uh, the next National Assembly would also be able to, uh, not only the National Assembly, but whosoever becomes a Prime Minister would also be complete uh, his or her tenure for a five-year tenure. But so long as Assemblies uh, continue to complete their tenure, because if, if a change occurs from within the system, that, and according to the Constitution, that should be okay for everyone. But uh, I think uh, one looks forward to, you know, we are very right. optimistic about, this, about our system, the way things are at present. Now, Pakistan is geostrategically very important internationally. Now, as a former diplomat, how do you think, Ambassador Basit, the world is looking at these elections that are playing out in Pakistan at this moment? I think there is a huge interest uh, as to who will form the next government in Pakistan because uh, there are, uh, you, as you know, that in the region itself, uh, we are in a deadlock situation with India. Uh, with Afghanistan, we have some issues. Uh, even uh, recently, we had a problem with Iran as well. Uh, and then uh, our relations, the strategic partnership with China uh, also uh, witnessed some uh, misunderstandings and then uh, our relations with, with the U.S. So I think the world at large must be looking uh, with great interest right. as to who will be forming the next government in Pakistan because uh, uh, we would like to be seen as moving ahead particularly in the context of our economic development, uh, to have more and more investment, foreign direct investment in Pakistan, and also in the context of our commerce, our trade. <clears throat> now, at this moment, uh, Ambassador Basit, the fact is, you know, people are looking at how Pakistan is also pursuing its foreign policy. Under Imran Khan, there was this impression that went around the world that perhaps Imran Khan, by taking a very hard position against the West, against the United States, probably ended up isolating Pakistan on the international stage. Now, I know you don't have a crystal ball to gaze into, but a lot of speculation within Pakistan now says that the prediction is probably it's Nawaz Sharif who may return as the Prime Minister for the fourth time. Do you think Nawaz Sharif, if he becomes the Prime Minister, will be able to mend fences with the West and you know, end Pakistan's diplomatic isolation? I think during the last government, the PDM government, which uh, uh, which we had for more than, for about 16 months, things have uh, improved uh, with the U.S. 
uh, and uh, if Mr. Nawashri becomes uh, the, the Prime Minister for a fourth term, uh, I think things will get better. Uh, but that process uh, has already begun. Uh, and so uh, I do not see any massive uh, change in our relationship with the US because uh, if you look at the global dynamics, the way things are working, since we have a strategic partnership with China, that relationship is very, very important for Pakistan. So our transactional nature of relationship with the U.S. will continue so long as it serves some of our mutual interests. So beyond that, I do not see as to how we can really put uh, uh, in, or inject more substance into this relationship. Beyond, I mean, there are possibilities for economic cooperation and for other things. But uh, as far as the relationship is concerned, I think during the PDM government, things have uh, started becoming better. Mm -hmm. Right. Interesting. Now, one of the issues that over the course of the last decade that has been talked about a lot internationally and also within Pakistan is, is the problem that the Pakistani economy has sunk into. The problem of inflation and as to have growth simply has eluded the Pakistani economy. The question that I want to ask you, Ambassador Basit, is a lot of people say that the reason why Pakistan has sunk is not just domestic, but also its diplomatic isolation. So the question is, what are the people in Pakistan, especially the youth, looking for from their government at this moment? No, I think Pakistan has never been isolated. Though I would agree and to agree with you that Pakistan has been uh, through many rough, uh, I mean, has been through a rough phase economically. But I think those things were mostly because of our internal mismanagement, lack of good governance, and uh, to a certain extent corruption. Uh, so I, one hopes that our uh, political leaders have learned from their past mistakes and uh, the next government would be able to put its sec together. Because as you know, that uh, the first principle of any good foreign policy is good governance at home. So uh, Pakistan is an important country. It's strategically located. Uh, we can be a, we can become a bridge uh, between east and west because we straddle both. I mean, South Asia, West Asia, Central Asia. So Pakistan uh, is blessed with its uh, with many things. The question is how uh, how intelligently and deftly we we exploit these things to our advantage at the end of the day. Interesting. Thank you very much indeed, Ambassador Basit, for joining us and getting us that perspective there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.